In this episode of Weather Observation Course, I, the Weather Observer, will introduce how to measure wind and air pressure. First, let me explain what wind is. The wind is... Hey, Mr. Observer! Are you calling me? Yes, I am explaining the definition of wind. Wind is the flow of air, and wind direction is the direction from which the wind blows. If the wind blows from the northwest to the southeast, then it's a northwesterly wind. The angle of the wind is measured clockwise from true north. For example, the northeasterly wind is 45 degrees, and the northwesterly wind is 315 degrees. There are three main units of wind speed, knot, meters per second, and kilometers per hour. Knot is the speed unit commonly used in aviation and navigation. Meters per second is the international unit, and kilometers per hour is the commonly used speed unit for Hong Kong weather reports. The wind direction and wind speed generally take the average value within a certain observation period. In a weather report, the wind direction and wind speed are the average values within a 10-minute time span. Huh? This symbol looks like an arrow. Interesting! Yes, this symbol indicates the wind speed and wind direction. It's a long line with a sign at the end. The direction pointed by the end of the long line is the wind direction. For example, an easterly wind is like this. The sign at the end indicates the wind force. Phoebe, do you know what the function of those cups on the cup anemometer is? Hmm, I don't know. But when the wind blows, the cups turn around. So, I guess the cups are used to collect the wind? Your guess is half right. The cups are used to measure wind speed. The wind speed sensor is composed of three symmetrical cups, which are fixed on a vertical spindle. Since the concave surface of the cup bears a larger wind force than the convex surface, the wind blowing into the cups will cause the spindle to rotate. The higher the wind speed, the faster the cups rotate. I see. If I'm not mistaken, this rod should be indicating the wind direction. Exactly. The wind vane has a tail wing and a pointing rod. The pivot is fixed on a vertical spindle. The area of the tail is larger than the head of the wind vane. When the wind blows, the tail receives a higher wind force. So the wind pushes the wind vane to rotate until the wind direction is parallel to the direction of the wind vane. Phoebe, let me ask you a question. Do you know which side of the wind vane indicates the wind direction? Since for the symbol of wind speed and direction, the direction of the tail is the wind direction. So the wind vane should be the same. Hmm, that's wrong. The direction pointed by the arrow is the wind direction. Oh, besides the cup anemometer, does the observatory use any other instruments to measure wind speed? We also use the ultrasonic anemometer to measure it. Ultrasonic anemometer? Yes, it uses the speed of sound waves to calculate wind speed. The propagation speed of sound waves in the real environment is equal to the propagation speed of sound waves in the still air plus the velocity of airflow in the atmosphere. When it is downwind, the sound waves travel faster. On the contrary, the sound waves travel slower when it's upwind. Therefore, the wind speed can be calculated by comparing the propagation speed of sound waves in the still air with the actual measured speed. The ultrasonic anemometer has signal transmitter and receiver, which are placed at a certain distance apart. Pairs of transmitter and receiver will be placed in different directions. In this way, the wind speed in different directions can be measured, so as to obtain the direction and speed of the wind. The ultrasonic anemometer has many advantages, such as high sensitivity, suitable for precise measurements. In addition, when the wind direction changes drastically, it may cause damages to the mechanical components of the cup anemometer. 
Since the ultrasonic anemometer has no mechanical components, it is less likely to be damaged or worn. Where should anemometers be installed? I see that anemometers seem to be placed at high places. Yes, there are standards for anemometer installations too. Ideally, an anemometer should be installed 10 meters above the ground, and the location should be open and unobstructed. Usually, we will set an aviation obstruction light next to the anemometer to avoid collision by an aircraft. And a lightning rod will be set on the other side to protect the instrument from lightning strikes. Next, we're going to introduce the measurement of air pressure. Phoebe, did you know that air has weight? Of course! I'm also made out of air! Our planet is surrounded by the atmosphere, and the air particles in the atmosphere are attracted by the Earth's gravity. Air pressure is the weight of the column of air on the object's surface, divided by the surface area of the object. In general, the higher the place, the fewer the air particles and the lower the air pressure. The density of cold air is higher than warm air. Therefore, cold air is also heavier and the air pressure is higher. Phoebe, did you know that the generation of wind is closely related to air pressure? Hmm, I didn't know. Wind is formed by the difference in air pressure. Air moves from the high pressure area to low pressure area. The air in the low pressure area rises and the air in the high pressure area sinks. The flow of air forms the wind. The lower the air pressure in the center of the low pressure area, the stronger the wind will be. Why does the air flow in the high pressure and low pressure areas look like a swirl? Oh. Initially, the air in the high-pressure area moves directly towards the low-pressure area. But because of the influence of the Coriolis force generated by the rotation of the Earth, it becomes a swirl-like movement. So, how do we measure air pressure? The traditional instrument for measuring air pressure is the mercury barometer, a mercury-filled capillary with its opening immersed in a container which is also filled with mercury. The higher the air pressure, the greater will be the height of the mercury column. The scale displayed on the mercury column in the glass tube is the air pressure reading. In addition to mercury barometers, automatic weather stations will use electronic barometers that use capacitors to measure changes in air pressure. The air pressure readings will be sent back to the observatory headquarters in real time. Electronic barometers are now widely used due to their portability and high accuracy. The international unit of air pressure is Pascal. Meteorological departments generally use hectopascal as the unit of air pressure. I see! That's all for this episode. Time flies fast when you're having fun. And the weather observation course has come to an end. Yes, this is the last episode. Thank you for watching this online course. Didi, Sunny, let's say it together. Bye! 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 Bye!